All right, guys, this is going to be a video on the four mistakes that new off-roaders make. Uh, I'm out here in the sun. The sun is ridiculous, so if I'm squinting, I'm sorry. Um, it is what it is, but this following video is going to be on the four mistakes that new off-roaders make. So if you're a new off-roader, uh, perhaps you didn't grow up in a family off road you don't have any friends to go with, maybe you bought a Jeep or you bought a Forerunner or whatever the heck you bought, and you want to go out wheeling, it's springtime, or it's getting to be springtime, and uh, spring is in the air, you're feeling it, even though I'm standing in snow. I'm feeling spring, it's coming. Um, maybe you guys want to get out and go wheeling. So trying to give you a little bit of background so that you don't make these mistakes. All right, the very first mistake as I see it is you, the driver, passenger, friends, dogs, cats, goats, pigs, whatever you off-road with. You might have a pet pig for all I know, I have no idea. You're not ready to go off-roading. Perhaps you're not wearing long pants or boots or adequate clothing. I tend to wear hoodies a lot. The only problem is if you get exposed, as in you gotta go for a walk, sometimes you gotta walk home because you screwed up, you might, you might not be warm enough. Bring an extra hat with you, maybe some gloves, and we'll get to that in a second, um, in terms of you know protecting your body if you need to dig out. Your, your hands, if you're wheeling in snow, might get cold. Uh, they might get hot, maybe the rock you're in is insanely hot, or the sand could be 120 degrees. Um, you need to be prepared for your body to work out in the weather that you're in, both predicted and unpredicted. Here in Michigan, I've literally been hunting in 40, 50 degrees, and then six hours later, it's snowing. So off-roading is a similar thing. You might go out in the spring and it might be, you know, it might be 40 degrees in the, in the noon. You might have snow that comes in at five. So be prepared, especially if you live in Michigan, because our weather is just not totally unpredictable. We have no idea what we're getting. The weather people have no idea. We don't even listen to the weather people. They're full of nonsense. So, uh, some things that you might want to remember, like I said, boots, uh, you definitely want to have closed toe shoe shoes, you don't want to, I mean, I get people wheeling flip flops, and I get people wheeling Crocs, and whatever, especially live, live in the south, they play in the mud all the time, they have swim gear on. Here's the problem, when you're working with a winch, you're working with a shovel, someone takes a shovel and stabs in the ground, your foot happens to be in the way because it's sunk in the mud, you're going to have a bad day. So. Wear, bring, at least bring closed-toed shoes. If you're off-roading in beautiful weather, maybe you're going to the beach or something, bring some closed-toed shoes so when you get in trouble, you can put them on. You know, I'm not trying to tell you to be uncomfortable, but you definitely want to have, if you're laying on rock, you're laying on sand, you're laying maybe around animals and or snakes or, or uh, you know, frogs or crickets, I don't know. You could be around ants, fire ants. You got to have your body protected. Um, at least somewhat i realize fire ants can crawl, crawl into your clothes um which is obviously a really bad day um and i realize a snake can bite through clothes but at least have some sort of way like a carhartt hoodie you can go buy one at tractor supply for now they're ridiculous they're like 40 50 bucks for a stupid carhartt hoodie but at least keep it in your truck the other thing is for winching you obviously want to be able to dampen out the line Carhartt hoodie works great for that throw the hoodie on the on the line if it were to break the carhartt dampens out the whack that happens when it breaks they have a ton of uses. Just go grab yourself a hoodie of any brand. It's just, you know, I like my Carhartt hoodies. They're warm. I haven't had any trouble with them. They, they're they not moisture barrier, but water beads up a little bit on them before it soaks in. So if you get splashed or something, it's not so bad. Um, wheel with blankets. Keep in mind, if you get wet, anything below... 98.6 degrees is going to start cooling you down. So if you're wheeling almost anywhere, you could get hypothermia over time. I get you're probably not going to get hypothermia when it's 80 degrees and the sun's out, but when the sun goes down, it might still be 80 degrees. But if you're wet and you can't dry off, for some reason you can't build a fire, something happens, you can get cold. Some people are more susceptible to this than other people. I mean, if you're used to wearing shorts in 40 degree weather like Michiganders tend to do, maybe you'll, you'll be a little bit better off. Keep in mind to just just plan ahead. You should have room in your vehicle, throw a blanket or two in there. That way your better half or your friends or whatever can stay warm too. I think it's a perfectly reasonable backstop. Uh, it gives you something, maybe a blanket that you don't really care about, just like a cheap one from any store. You can throw it in the ground if you have to work on, underneath your rig. It can also be used to get your rig unstuck. You can put the blanket on the ground in front of the tire and it'll give you some extra flotation and traction. All right, so I think we got the driver and the vehicle unprepared. 
or uh, excuse me, the driver and passenger are unprepared. Now we're gonna get to the vehicle is not prepared. Now, when I'm making this video, I'm assuming you're doing more than just going wheeling in your backyard or you're driving down to the local two or the local, you know, fire road, uh, two track, whatever. I mean, two track would still be considered off roading, but I'm assuming you're doing a little bit more than just driving down an unmaintained road or like a logging road. You need to be able to trust your vehicle to be there for you when you're alone. Because I'm assuming if you're watching this video, maybe you're embarking on the whole off roading thing as a new off roader. So, you might want to bring extra U joints and a CV axle. Like if you own a Chevy and you you could just keep a CV axle underneath the front end, or underneath the back seat. Take six bolts and a big bolt. Take the hub off, and you can do that without pulling, um, you know, the whole spindle apart and stuff like that. So you could conceivably change a CV axle. I don't know how to do it on a Toyota. I don't know how to do it on a uh, F or a uh, F one fifty. But I know on a Chevy you could change a CV while it's still all together in the truck. Um, you may want to bring a CV. You definitely want to bring a U-joint for the rear axle. You're probably not going to take apart your whole front suspension in, in, on a straight axle to get to the to the U-joint, especially as a new off-roader. But you probably might want to bring one for your front drive shaft. You have usually two or three C or, uh, U joints on your front drive shaft or a CV. Um, usually the CV on the front drive shaft won't fail. Um, whereas a double carton or a single or a, just a normal U-joint. You may want to carry extra u-joints so i usually keep in my cummins is really famous for breaking u-joints uh, before i went to a bigger rear drive shaft i had a custom drive shaft made with uh i think they're 1500 series uh joints they're pretty big um so i probably don't have to worry about that so much anymore but um i do know i broke a lot of u-joints on my cummins the rear, the rear drive shaft was distinctly undersized for how i was using the truck and the abuse that that engine was putting out and the shift kit was putting out and whatever so carry spare u joints cv if you can uh and know how to change them have a couple tools on hand you might need an allen you might need to have a torx head you might need to have a 10 millimeter i don't know could be anything 7 16 they're all there's a thousand different ways that they're hooked on carry the right tools to be able to do that specific job um worn tires probably shouldn't go off-roading if you have excessively worn tires um because your tires are where the rubber meets the road and that's what's gonna get you out of trouble. Um, so probably shouldn't go with excessively worn tires and in the same way, excessively damaged tires. If you have a carcass coming apart or you have a you know, a big crack in the sidewall or a cut, those are the kind of things that are gonna fail when you're off-roading. So potentially keep those, um, or don't go wheeling with junk tires, I guess what I'm trying to say. You're gonna need them, you're gonna want them. Um, so something you consider if you have a new vehicle, probably don't have to worry about that as much, but you should keep an eye on your tire's health, especially after you off-road, because you could damage the tire while you're off-roading, you might not even know it. So something to consider there. Um, so I, oh, uh, dry rotted valve stems. Um, the valve stem, right here, they're generally on the outside of a single wheel tire on a dual, they might be on the inside, but, um, whoopsies, uh, the valve stem, on aftermarket wheels tends to be protected see how the aluminum comes up and protects it um that's generally what you find in an aftermarket wheel but an oem wheel these suckers could be sticking out you know wide out into the world so they could get ripped they can get cut they can get dry rotted from the sun and cracked um definitely check the condition of your valve stems you may want to have a valve stem replacement kit to put valve stems in from the outside they usually go in from the inside um and on, you saw on that wheel you probably couldn't replace the valve stem very easily so that's kind of a pro and con if the wheel is protecting your valve stem you might not be able to fix your valve stem if the valve stem fails the air goes out the tires no good anymore so definitely want to protect your valve stems plan ahead when you're wheeling to not scrape them across the ground or across a rock or something uh definitely avoid wheel to rock contact um especially if you're if you're alone try to avoid that um Let's see here. Make sure your fluids aren't low. When you're off-roading, you might get to vehicle tipping or going up or down. All that's gonna change the fluid level inside of the transmission, the axles, the T-case, the motor. If you're not up at the manufacturer's recommended amounts, you may experience a lack of oil. Uh, another thing to keep in mind too is when things like lawnmowers or whatever, show a maximum angle that they're made to operate at it might not be because it's the tipping point you might say oh this is stupid i can operate it way farther over you might 
you also might starve it of oil uh, on some function of it. So it's same thing on cars, tractors, whatever. If you're operating on its side, you might starve some important component of oil, and that's going to be a really bad day. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure your fluids are topped off. A lot of people overfill their fluids on an off-road vehicle for that exact reason. So I'm not necessarily telling you to do that because there's a lot of different applications. Some people purposely overfill their differentials. They take the fill plug. They either trip, tip the truck up so they can just squirt a whole ton extra in and they put the plug in, or they squirt a whole ton extra in and don't let it leak out and put their hand over top of the hole, grab the plug or the, uh, you know, the, um, the pipe fitting plug and plug it up with extra oil in it. So transmissions are done like that. A lot of people overfill manual transmissions for this exact reason. Um, can't really do that with an automatic. I suppose I don't really know why you would. It's a closed system and it's pressurized. But when you're splash oiling things like a manual transmission, a lot of people overfill them for that exact reason. So be cognizant of your fluid. Make sure it's not really old or full of water where your diff is getting exposed to a bunch of crap. One more thing too, um, differentials transmissions transfer cases have breathers on an oem vehicle they're not designed to go through a crap load of water because water will come in the breathers and it's something you have to be cognizant of as an off-roader you may want to make longer taller breathers that you put higher up in the truck so that you can go through more water without having water get into your related components that would be a bad day so definitely want to keep that in the back of your mind avoid going through deep water on an unmodified vehicle especially the vehicle isn't made to be an off-roader you're off-roading something that wasn't like take a jeep xj they can go do, they can go do some stuff they were not built to do the things that you're doing with them when they were made by jeep so you're going to want to upgrade and change out components that were not designed to do the thing that you're about to do with them keep that in the back of your mind um spring shackles so pretty common on a chevy spring shackles right here can you see it it's where the loose spring back goes on to what's called the shackle it allows it to pivot so that the same length um distance can be had okay so your your you your uh, leaf springs in a u i have to do this because the phone's not wide enough um when you compress it it's going to change lengths so the shackle allows the um the points in the frame or the, the mounting points to remain consistent except for the spring gets longer and shorter as you compress the leaf spring so that uh spring hanger whether it's a ford chevy dot dot toyota doesn't matter they can rot out and when they rot out they break when they break the leaf spring gets shot up through the bed and you will have a bad day it's super common on, on chevys on gmt 800s they rot out for some reason i don't know why it's a really common failure on a gmt 800 which is like a 99 to 07 uh, Chevy truck. So I had to do ours on our hunting truck. Um, I've seen it fail a lot on everything. So, and when you're off-roading, you're going to put more load on the leaf spring and on the, on the hanger on every, every component of your truck is going to get loaded up worse and at different angles when you're off-roading. So check your, um, spring shackles to make sure they're not rotted. You'll see a hole in the middle of them usually. Uh, that's bad. So we definitely want to avoid that. And finally, um don't wheel in a vehicle that has a cracked frame or don't wheel alone i mean if you want to go beat the tar out of your stuff that's fine you know go do your thing but if you're going to wheel alone and trust that you're going to get you or your family home safely don't wheel in with a cracked frame rotted frame whatever because you're going to put a lot of torsional load on the frame when you're off-roading and it's going to probably break and it could break in a way that could crack the transmission or break the transfer case off the back of the transmission depending on how your your drive line is bolted to your trans and or to the to uh your frame and also where the frame is broken at um you could have it break where uh, where the suspension is just flopping off in the middle of nowhere so definitely don't want to wheel with a broken cracked rotted frame avoid that big time i'm gonna stop the video and restart it so i don't have lose this progress all right continuing on with point three um Um, bum, 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 bum. So bring spare gear. I already talked about bringing spare U joints, spare CV joints. Um, bring a tire plug kit. It's super easy to patch a tire. Um, really not that hard to do, especially if all you got to do is make it home. You can always go in and get it re done. My, I had Dura tracks on my excursion. They were Load Range E 285 70R, 75R uh, 16s. 
Those tires were magnets for nails. I have no idea why. I've never had a tire that has had more nails in it than that. those tires. There was probably four or five patches on each one of those tires on that truck, and I never went in to get them properly patched. I just did them where you shove the tool in, clean it out, shove the patch in, let it glue up, and you're done. Worked fine. It was back when I wheeled a lot and I was in college, so I wasn't going to blow a whole bunch of money on new tires and whatever. So uh, I got by. I'm not saying you should do that, but a tire patch kit is super easy to do. You can do that trail side. Um, super easy to do. Just clean, obviously, the mud, dirt, water out of the spot before you patch it. Um, so tire plug kit, super important. Make sure your jack that your vehicle comes with, if you're going to use that as your jack, keep in mind a jack can get you out of trouble. You can lift your vehicle up so you can pack rocks or pack dirt or pack uh, um, sand or whatever, put stuff back underneath the tire, dropped log, whatever you need to do, brush. If you need to, you can jack a corner of the vehicle up if you really bury one corner and then you can get stuff back underneath it. Be careful when you do that because the vehicle can get really unstable and fall and you don't get underneath it. Um, the jack can be hugely beneficial. And if you have a flat tire, you need to change the tire, obviously you need to have a jack. Be sure that your jack works on your vehicle. You may be going with a lifted or a modified vehicle where the jack is no longer tall enough. Bring practice in your yard, practice jacking your vehicle up with the jack you want to bring and bring the right wood or uh, whatever you want to use for an olive piece of plastic, what, whatever you have that you're going to use as blocks, or if you have the fancy, you know, off-roading lift blocks for jacks and all that other stuff. They make specific things for this. Um, you want to make sure that your jacking mechanism system is actually going to work with your vehicle in its current state. Big tires, lifted, whatever you have going on. You want to make sure that your wheels and tires, um, I'm sorry, that your jack can lift up your vehicle and go to enough height for you to change the tire. Um, you can use the environment to lift the vehicle. You could drive up on a hill. You could uh, put some blocks underneath or a piece of wood under the axle and then take a shovel and dig around and get the tire unburied. If you have open diffs or you have locking diffs or manually unlocking diffs, you could put in two-wheel drive. If it's a rear, dig a hole with your one tire so you don't have to do it with shovel. So you can change the tire in a hole, but you have to block up the axle, of course. Or if you, if you have a transfer case that you can shut off the rear end and just have the front end driven, you have an open diff or you have a selectable locker, you could bury one tire using only front wheel drive, put the brakes on, bury the tire, change the tire. That might not, not be something that's relevant to you guys being new off-roaders, but um, you can use the environment to change the tire is what I'm getting at. Be very careful, don't let your body to get underneath the vehicle when you do that. Um, Toe strap, shackles, uh, and a trailer hitch, or however you wish to pull. And keep in mind, you need to have tow hooks. Um, you got to have some sort of towing points in your vehicle. You can't be using your wheels to pull with. You can't be using your body. You should not be using the bumper. You shouldn't be using your bumper mounts. Should be hard mounts that are going to the frame in some way. A trailer hitch mount. Um, what I meant to do, uh, I have mostly toe straps in here. I was gonna do something as a visual aid and I forgot to do it. So, one of the things I like to do, and let me see if I can set up a visual aid. My truck is an absolute mess from our trip. Well, okay, I'm not gonna do it, but I'm gonna explain what I do. It's a good idea to use a trailer hitch on the back to help distribute the load, but you don't necessarily wanna only pull on the ball. What I usually do is I wrap the strap around the hitch a couple times so you're putting some load onto the hitch and then i take the bitter end and i hook it to the truck so if the hitch ball breaks or if the hitch breaks you have it on the truck and you also tie it in such a way or you wrap it in such a way that you, a lot of the load is going to go on the truck and, and then pull the slack out so both the um the eye for the trailer hitch breakaway or the safety chains is taking say 50% of the load and then the hitch is taking 50% of the load. You'll pull anything you want to pull like that. I use these for towing because well the factory thing isn't really doesn't really work well with smaller hooks. Um, and these work really well for pulling things out. I would definitely if you can't use a trailer hitch, I'd hook up to both of them so you distribute the load across the hitch. But you can absolutely do it this way or that way. Um, those are two of my shackles that I use. I also have some soft shackles. I really like soft shackles. They're a lot safer. Uh, if they if this if they come off, they're not a projectile. Whoops, you almost slipped on some ice here. They're not a projectile. Um, projectiles are bad. So you might want to have with you a toe strap or two because you might break one. Um, make sure that it's of adequate 
strength for your truck. If you drive a diesel heavy duty pickup, you really want to have a really heavy duty strap. I highly recommend a bubble rope or some sort of a kinetic rope. They are unbelievable lifesavers. You can do things with that rope that would take two trucks to do because you can conserve your um, your velocity, you can get the vehicle going, give it a good yank, so you're storing your kinetic energy within the rope and it releases it slowly so it doesn't just yank the truck and stop it. So much easier in your truck, so much easier on your strap, so much easier on the vehicle you're towing out so you're not yanking the tar out of it, breaking things. Just, they're expensive, just get one. I promise you the $300 or whatever it is for a, a kinetic rope is pittance compared to what you're going to spend in your time off-roading and it'll probably last you the rest of your life because you probably won't be breaking straps all the time the kinetic rope makes a huge difference so look at getting one but have a good way to hook to your truck shackles uh i use seven eights d-rings uh soft shackles are great i mean they're really strong avoid abrasion on them because soft things will abrade a a synthetic winch line is really good right up until it abrades or gets sun damage so protect it from the sun and protect it from abrasion a cable you can drag it right across rock and it's not going to care but i will say i am a synthetic line lover don't take me as a anti-synthetic person they're super strong um very safe but there is more than one way to skin a cat and cable still has its place in a lot of ways there's a reason why recovery um vehicles trucks still use cable um, they can use whatever they want, and they still use cables. Um, let me see here. Fire extinguisher. Should have a fire extinguisher. I'm usually guilty of that. Um, because you may have... You may want to prevent a forest fire. You may want to prevent... Um, if you have an injured person you need to get them out of the way, you may need to tame, to tame the fire long enough to get the person out. So you may say, oh, well, I'll just let my truck burn to the ground. I have insurance. And that might be. And I'm... Uh, and I'm going to ground myself a little bit. That's a lot of my opinion, is that if this truck catches on fire, I'm not going to save it. Um, usually once a fire starts, it's already done enough jam damage where you don't want the vehicle anyway. Um, so I should be better about carrying a fire extinguisher. And the reason why I'm not better is I usually forget. Sorry, I'm trying to get out of the sun, guys. Um, or I'm doing something where I'm concerned about having a compressed bottle with me bouncing around in the cab or doing something i either have dogs or a baby or something like that i should really do a better job and you should do a better job too of having a fire extinguisher it's important to prevent fires and like to prevent your fire from now impacting neighboring homes neighboring properties whatever barns whatever you want to get your fire out i could do a better job of that so um and then also kind of moder honorable mention i'm not a i do believe in medical related things i'm not a doctor i'm not a paramedic i'm not a um i'm not a trained medical person i do carry with me um a cat tourniquet or two or three um some bandages some quick clot gauze that kind of thing i carry a medical kit i don't want to pretend to be a medical expert you should watch um there's tons of medical related youtube stuff whether it's tactical related gun related um uh, med stuff you should take a class i don't care if you're just a, a normal person you should know how to handle medical situations because you might need to keep your significant other or yourself or tell someone how to keep yourself alive until someone better comes along um but I'm not an expert and I don't want to pretend to be. Um, Trail Recon is a channel that I've always watched and been inspired by. He's a Navy Corpsman and I know he's talked a little bit about med stuff, um, especially about what gear he brings. Now, I know he hasn't really gotten too much into theory and application because I think obviously anyone is concerned about liability. You should watch people who are paramedics. You should seek a class. Um, if you have any friends who are ambulance people, have them teach you how to do it or how to do it properly. Watch some videos on it. There's tons of ways to educate yourself. I don't want to pretend that I'm a medical person, but you should definitely think about that. Very, very, very important. Um, make sure you have the tools to change the tires on your vehicle. Uh, change a tire out. Make sure you have the correct lug wrench for your aftermarket wheels if you have it or the correct socket in both cases, the correct socket to go onto the lug wrench and the correct um socket to go on the lugs if you don't need to have a lug wrench um 
Oh boy. And if you own a vehicle with a, di with a disconnecting axle that doesn't have hub disconnects like Ford would, or like an older truck solid axle would, or a swing axle from Ford, you want to have um, something that they know how to do it. How to, uh, you can put about a one inch long spacer of some kind, whether it's a piece of steel, whether it's a socket or whatever, like a Chevy IFS differential, you can take apart the actuator and put that in there as a spacer and then you have a full time front end, but at least it gets you home. So you should know how to jury rig your truck and you should know how your four wheel drive system engages. Like my excursion has two relays. One relay turns on and off four wheel drive and the other one turns on and off um, four low. So if you do have one fail, you can just, they're the same relays, you just move them back and forth and you can get in and out of four low and they'll stay in that, um, it'll stay in that configuration until it gets actuated back. So you can put, you can take the relay, I'm trying to remember, I think it was four low that, or four, four wheel drive that failed. So I used the four low relay over, put it into four wheel drive so I could run four wheel drive. Um, and that got me home and then I changed relays. You might want to carry extra relays, extra fuses, whatever you need. You definitely want to have extra fuses, but all right. So I'm going to stop the video so that I can change. So if power goes out, okay, I'm going to do that right now. All right, guys, this is kind of a minimum thing that I take with me when I'm exploring. Um, I'm going to tighten that smidge, but take a chainsaw, take a good chainsaw that you can trust. I really like this saw. I use it for everything. The 545 is just a really good saw. Like if you're just looking to get a chainsaw that you can take wheeling, that you can handle when you have trees come down your yard in a storm, like just a good utilitarian chainsaw. I don't think you can get a better saw than the 545. It's got plenty of power. It's a 50 cc saw. It's not that big. It pulls a 20 inch bar literally fine. Um, you can cut through, you can drop some big trees. You can cut up limbs easily. It'll also limb just fine. Like it's just an all around really good chainsaw. It's really light. Anyone can use it. Um, fits in a toolbox really well. I keep it in my toolbox when I'm off-roading. You never know. You obviously don't want to just go through the woods and cut trees down, but you may have a tree across the trail that you need to take care of. Uh, and you may want to take a file to file your chain if you hit a stump or dirt or a rock or whatever. But it doesn't have to be a Husqvarna. I just really like, I'm a Husqvarna fan, and I really like this chainsaw. And uh, it's something that I always grab with me when I go off-roading or on road trips or vacations or whatever may include off-road excursions but even on on road you could have a tree fall down the road and then this way you can just clean it up so it's good to be prepared if you have the room to take things you should take it bring a pair of work gloves you never know if you need them um work gloves are always good um this is my camp hatchet as you can tell it's been around um i've started a lot of fires with this built a lot of fires great for hammering and tent stakes probably should do a better job of sharpening it this poor girl's been around um so much hammering in fact that it's basically beat the tar out of the thing but let me tell you having something like this i always have this in my truck it's always there um always good to be prepared now and also make sure that it's covered up and protected i keep this in my toolbox now because of this i don't want to have it flying around the vehicle with the blade um where is the blade? There it is. I don't want to have it flying around the vehicle with the blade exposed. Um, that's obviously bad juju. These guys. These will save your butt. Literally, it's a simple. If you need to get out. There you go. It's a just the simplest solution to a problem, you probably should have four, especially if you don't have locking differentials. They are admittedly as expensive. If you get four, you're going to spend a similar amount of money as if you just bought a winch, like an entry level, you know, I'm not going to say Chinese knockoff winch, but a winch nonetheless. Okay. A Badlands winch will do just fine. Warren winches also have internal failures like just because you buy a worn or something doesn't mean that it's going to just always work you may have to service it you should definitely maintain it you may have to fix it um you should definitely buy these are australian products they're amazing i had this truck and the dump trailer on it recently and as you can see the nubbins are fine 
It's a truly amazing tool. Not even kidding. Whoop, it's got a kangaroo. These are really amazing tools. They saved my butt. Um, they've already, one, get, one time getting buried and needing them is worth having them. So just get them. And I highly, I'm going to order two more. Thankfully I had the dump trailers ramps because just two was not enough. So the other thing, like I said, is you might want to bring whatever you need. I have the right sockets in here to take care of the truck. Um, and you know, a tool that you can trust. This has been out in the cold. Let me guess, it still works. Bring, bring tools you know how to use and that you trust. Um, my truck is a mess. My recovery bag is right there. I had to part through here to grab a bunch of recovery stuff. So it's all disheveled. I need to fix this. There's bar oil right there. You can see over there. I usually have, I got extra tent stakes over here. I got something to measure two stroke oil. Um, I can just fill that up and measure out a new thing of two stroke oil if I need to. Um, I got extra ratchet straps in here and some locks and usually an extra pair of work gloves over there. Usually I have fire starting. In fact, there's a bag of fire starters right over there. Usually there's a lighter or two in here. Just, you know, if you have a pickup truck, use your space. There's a reason why we have them. All right, I'm going to shut it off and flip the camera angle here. All right, doing this out here in the cold, my battery is always getting dead, so I'm going to make this quick. The last point is know where you're going. You can download a lot of free off-road mapping stuff. You can have some paid stuff that is not hard to swallow. Gaia GPS is one. Onyx Off-Road is another. Um, if you're an ORVer, I mean, you can still use it for trucks, too, is like the Polaris Off-Road app. Um, Can-Am has an off-road app, but I haven't played with it. I downloaded it. I haven't had time to look through how it works. Supposedly, I can cast it onto my snowmobile. I didn't know that. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, know where you're going perhaps have a hard map so at least you know kind of what some landmarks are where the cities are if you have a gps in the truck i mean i just think gps's are just the way to go they're not you're you're talking well you can get a basic one for 250 bucks um and you can get a lot of free maps you can get some paid for maps from vv mapping um so gaia gps very simply is an app that you pay for and it'll be on your phone. Onyx Off-Road is simply on your phone. Now you have to trust that your phone's gonna work and have service, that's a huge issue. You should have a backup as in a GPS um, that gets GPS signal. You, <sighs> phones are a little touchy about that in theory. They should get, get position data, but the problem is then the map's no good uh, in terms of being able to scroll and look for things. So you can use something that has a GPS sensor there might be some uh i have a garmin overlander that i got for snowmobiling and i'm going to be using it in the truck i'm going to be using it on dirt bikes i think it's a really awesome tool that's kind of my go-to now i always had a um, gps map 64 xp or sp i don't know what the heck it was a little handheld thing i've used it for hunting for years works great but i want to have a bigger screen so i could really see what's going on there's some awesome mapping solutions out now I will try and make some videos on mapping solutions because it's important. You need to know where you are if you're going to go off-roading alone. You need to tell somebody where you're going and when you're planning on coming home so they know where you are and where to go search for you. And tell someone who's responsible. And tell somebody who has a way and maybe contacts to actually go get you some help. Maybe they know someone in the area you're going. Maybe they have a pickup truck themselves or a truck of some kind. Maybe they own a tractor. I don't know. Just somebody who has something that can go help you or knows people who can go help you. So if you need help. Um, I skipped over one thing. I'm going to jump back really quick. Back to point number one about you not being ready. If you have a specific medical situation that you have, maybe you have diabetes or something like that, make sure you bring whatever medicine you need for more than just the time you're going trail riding. Bring more than you need in case you have to stay the night in the trucks. Things can happen. Truck can break and run out of fuel. That's my next point. But things can happen where you need to have your medical related things for whatever maybe you have heart medication i don't know things you might have bring extras bring whatever you need to have to survive several days even if you're only planning on going for several hours usually a human doesn't need very much to survive sp several days in terms of just being able to survive just bring your couple pills or whatever you need to bring and uh that way you're good to go that's on you to make sure you have your stuff please remember to do it because I can't tell you the number of times that things that were supposed to take be, be a two-hour two-hour cruise turned into. I've never had to stay a night in a vehicle, but I got close a couple times. So, anyway, my last point. It, well, I guess I've already started the last point. Don't get lost. And bring spare fuel. Make sure when you start going off-roading, you start going off-roading with a full tank of fuel, so you have a you have the whole tank to deal with. 
And if you're going to go somewhere that doesn't have easy access, you should bring a fuel, a couple fuel tanks, two five gallon fuel tanks, so it'll get you a long ways. Keep in mind when you're off roading, you are going to burn a lot more fuel because you're usually first and second gear, maybe third gear, and you might be in four low. You're going to burn a lot more fuel. You're going to idle a lot. Maybe you're going to stop and look at points of interest. Maybe you leave your vehicle idling. You're going to use a lot more fuel than if you drove to the supermarket and back. So you may only go 10 miles off road. You may burn 20 gallons, which is ridiculous, but that's, that's part of the show. So make sure you're, you're going with the proper amount of fuel, a full tank of fuel and backup fuel if you so desire or need it, or if you have a small fuel tank. I know my power wagon, I always wheels with two extra things of fuel because that thing was a pig and it had a really small fuel tank. I've already said to tell a friend, bring a GPS, phone, backup phone, way to charge your phone, maybe a backup battery thing. Now keep in mind, I'm trying to make this video directed to people who might be going alone. If you're going with a group of people and maybe some of them are experienced, you can probably lay off your own. You should always be responsible for your own self, but if you're going with other people, they're probably overprepared because they've been down this route. They know how to be overprepared. They have the gear already. So go wheel with, if you can find people like that to go wheel with who have extra gear, extra common sense to go along with it so that you can just come along and learn, try, try to take people up on that. But I'm, I'm kind of making this video directed at people who don't have that opportunity and they had to learn, they have to learn on their own, which is fine. That's how I learned most of what I do is by my own. All right. So I think, I think I got everything covered. Hopefully you guys go out and have some fun. This is going to be a great year. I mean, we're starting a new year. I hope you guys get out and do some trail riding. Off-roading is amazing. It's a great family activity. It's a great friend activity. Go out and have some fun. I really hope the video comes out okay because of the stupid sun. I am trying. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the four things that new off-roaders forget or don't do or make a mistake with. Hope you, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share, tell your friends, comment if you like it. Comment if you don't like it, whatever. Have a great day.